Mm-hmm. Hello. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Hey. Hey, how are you? Hey, Jonah, what's up? <laughs> nice to meet you. I'm not sure what your name is. What's your name? Oh, hello. Can you hear me? Hello. Yes, hey. can you hear me? Yes, I can. Nice to meet you. There we go. What's <laughs> up, Jonah? What's up? What's your name? Sorry, I'm not uh, too sure. What Patrick. Patrick, nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you, dude. Wow, this is awesome. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to this. I'm so in love with your content. I was so happy to find you. It's uh, very <laughs> rare to see. Um, so I come from a sports background. So yeah, I'm, I'm very familiar I mean, with a lot of the things that you you know like to say and a lot of the sort of lessons you're teaching. But it's so important in the esports scene, and no one talks about it. And I'm just so happy to find someone that is uh, really pushing that kind of content. So thank you. Yeah, I mean, not not only does nobody talk about it, but the people who are popular in the scene mm-hmm. talk about the complete opposite, <laughs> right? Like it's like it's like they've never. They've never had any competitive training whatsoever. And so they're like, it was all my teammates' fault. And everybody's like, yeah, it was your teammates' fault. (laughs) No, so it's it's, it's fucked up. It really is. It really is. Yeah. Um, So what, I mean, like just before, so, okay. So a couple things, Jono. First off, my brother's wife just went into labor. Oh, my goodness. (laughs) <laughs> so I have exactly one hour. Okay. Um, well, we'll speed I, I was gonna, I was gonna like try to milk you for as much time as you could give me this morning, but now I have to like cut it off oh, at no. an hour. I'm always happy to um, do this like uh, another time too after we're done with this hour. So yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, like I feel, I feel an immense amount of like gratitude and privilege oh, no to be worries. talking to you. So whenever, I mean, as much as I'm never gonna refuse your time. I will, I will. Let's put it that way. Okay, let's um, do it then. <laughs> and so. So, like it would be cool um if you don't mind like can you just can you give me your background i'm i'm incredibly yeah. interested before we like dive in can you just like explain what like your journey and what it is that you're doing now sure yeah so i actually grew up in japan uh i didn't grow up in north america my mother's japanese and my dad's canadian so first 16 years of my life was spent in japan and um i was because my dad was Canadian, I was really into ice hockey, and I was competing for the U16 national team. Um, as in a, Japan. Yeah, in Japan, yeah, for their ice hockey team. So I was and what, to, what language did you guys speak at home? Uh, a bit of a mix of both. My dad speaks, in, I mean, both my parents speak Japanese and English, but my dad is like a very pasty white guy and my mom's Asian, so, <laughs> <laughs> so obviously like when my dad speaks Japanese, it sounds a little funny and my mom speaks English, it sounds a little funny. But, and uh, so you are, you are half pasty, half Japanese, yeah, is that? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and what, what what is your what does your dad do? Why was he in Japan? Yeah, so he's in the education system, and he's the head of school at Tokyo International School. So it's the sort of English international school that's uh, in the middle of Tokyo, where you have like a bunch of people from all kinds of nationalities. I think they have like um, shit. Uh, J- Jonah, give me give me give me one minute. It's my no brother. Rush. Just just one second. Yeah, yeah, no rush at all. Yo, sorry. No worries. This is, so this is like this is like a historic morning for me. <laughs> okay. um, Chaos, yeah. Chaos. Right. So, so you were playing. So you played like competitive ice hockey in Japan. Yeah. Uh, so I was, I guess, like in Asia, when you pick a sport, you go all in on it. <laughs> 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 from, from what I, from what I understand about Japan, when you pick anything, you go all in yeah, on it. Yeah, exactly. So. Um, 
And my dad, like, as I, when I was a younger kid, my dad wasn't uh, in the position he was. He was more of a PE teacher and just kind of, like, worked mm. his way up in the education industry. But uh, so naturally when your dad's, like, a PE gym teacher and is obsessed with ice hockey and is pushing you to do that, and it's like I was training to become a Olympian, I guess, to for Japan's oh. ice hockey team, and that's, like, mostly what my childhood upbringing was so very involved with competitive sports and like a proper strict training regimen and um that sort of upbringing um definitely shaped me who i am today <laughs> but uh unfortunately after high school i went to go compete um in canada for junior a and i separated both my shoulders so that was the Jesus. so so your goal yeah. was to train in japan to eventually move to canada Mm -hmm. to to play hockey yeah so when i was 16 i moved to the u.s to pursue hockey and then so my senior or my junior and senior with what with your whole fat your whole family moved yeah, to the u.s all, yeah we all moved to the u.s yeah um, for you uh i wouldn't say just for me definitely my dad could pursue his career as well and advance that um he was able to find a lot better position here in the u.s um as opposed to the opportunities that are present in japan uh, a lot more English right. opportunities, obviously, <laughs> in the U.S. That's so much pressure for a kid, right? Where it's like, we're going to move to Japan, yeah. but don't worry. It's it's not for you to go pro in hockey. Like, don't worry. It's not because of that. But, yeah. but also, if you did that, it would be good. <laughs> yeah, so I reached, like, the pinnacle of hockey in Japan. So it's like, okay, we need to go, like, find stronger competition. Like, so we moved to the U.S. Wow. and Canada for that. Um, so you moved when you were 16. And where in Canada? Uh, so uh, Kingston, Ontario yeah Kingston, ontario mm -hmm. i my my um I, i'm gonna this is gonna sound bad but i need to google that because oh, no worries most people it's only, it's about like three hours away from toronto i would say right. oh really yeah mm -hmm. um i spent a summer in toronto once oh cool yeah. right kingston is uh yeah 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 very cool okay awesome um, so when I got hurt, I was, I've was i been playing league for like the longest time, but it was very casually in the beginning. It was just something I did with my So you got, so you got hurt, you got hurt playing hockey and then yep. you like, you literally couldn't play anymore? Yeah, I was like, I couldn't play for, I think I was, the doctor was saying like nine to 11 months or something like that, which at that age, it's like, I can't really just sit around and wait <laughs> nine to 11 months. So during that time, I got really obsessed with league. And then I just decided to make the switch instead of going back to hockey to just pursue. And so, so that was, so you were 16 then and, and uh, uh, how long time, ago was sorry, it? Uh, when I got hurt, I was around like 19, 18, 19. Um, I moved right. to the U.S. to play for two years. And then after that, I went to go play after high school um, to go get a D1 scholarship. But uh, then I and got how long ago is that? How old are you now, Jenna? I'm 24 now, so I'm, I'm quite a bit older. <laughs> yeah, I finished. So, so and, yeah. this was like six years ago. Yeah, this was a while ago. Yeah. Uh, I mean, really a while. Yeah. <laughs> I guess yeah. time time when you're 24 is different than time when you're 26. Six years ago, I was like, oh shit! So it wasn't that long ago. And you were like, oh, it was forever ago. <laughs> this is very, yeah, that's true. Yeah, it feels like a lifetime ago because I just haven't really been involved with hockey, but. That was what really shaped me into getting so involved with in esports. Is I was a very competitive person and wanted to continue doing that in some way, shape, or form. And what did like what, what did your dad? How did your dad? What has the journey been with your dad? Like transitioning from hockey to esports. Um. So I guess he was always not like fully supportive of esports because esports realistically didn't exist more than 10 years ago. <laughs> so like how right. can you support something that doesn't exist? So he didn't love the fact that I spent the amount of time I was playing games while I was really training for hockey. But once I was done hockey, he knew I was already relatively high rank in league and he didn't understand what league was, but he understood me and trusted my sort of direction like okay i'm not going to do hockey anymore but i'm going to go to university and i'm going to do league like full time and put my full sort of energy and focus that i would be putting into hockey into this instead and he was pretty on board with it even though he didn't understand it but uh once i was hurt he was very fully supportive of it and um yeah just he sounds like he dude. sounds like a, he sounds like a good dude your dad <laughs> yeah he really is yeah um, but I'm, I'm, like, um, despite hard, despite the pastiness, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a so, big discipline right there. Yeah, and so what like what has your league story been like? What what then happened? 
Yeah, so I was probably Platinum 2 when I got hurt. And then I, even though I was, like, in Platinum, I was like, okay, like, you know, in a few years, like, I really want to play on, like, a university team. So I gave myself right. two years to, like, fully study the game, like, watch people that are better, reach out to people to see if I could get coached and stuff like this. And then I was able to get to about Diamond 2, I would say, within a two-year span. Um, and so how, like, what rank do you, like, what rank do you need to be to play on a, on a university team, realistically? Uh, usually about D2 to play on... A university team and right this team just happened to be really really good and i got really lucky that uh i didn't make the a team in my second year of university but i made the b team and i just got to surround myself with really really talented players they had like three challengers and like two grandmasters on the main roster at the time so i was able to learn and where, where was that jenna uh in mcmaster which is about really close to toronto about 40 minutes away from toronto. I, I i just got done watching your tiktok like, right <laughs> yeah. before i logged on where where the mcmaster the the oh, yeah, we like, won. championship game yeah, yeah. oh my Oh my god what a moment <laughs> yeah, so was, wait hold up hold up I'm, I'm gonna google that as well sure yeah uh mcmaster university yeah it's a school in hamilton ontario it's uh, about 40 minutes away from toronto but that, that was an amazing experience because we got to play against all the u.s schools like the ones that you know harvard Yale, oh, that's... like uh, michigan all these you know huge schools huge names UCI. And they all had they all had league teams. Yeah, yeah. So it felt like you're playing like D1 sports. It's just you know you're just the small school in Canada, and we just happen to have like a lot of talent there. So that's um, so crazy. And I guess yeah. talent begets talent, right? Like yeah, that's yeah. the way it works, where you get to these pockets of talent that just like then because you have three challengers on the team, yeah, you learn so much so fast. And that was me. Yeah, I was exactly. Just, like, the odd diamond that really like hard, hard, hard work. I worked harder than everyone. I'll tell you that because I needed to. But um, I really just learned and absorbed so fast. And then within a year, I was able to get challenger in 2019. And it was just surrounding myself My with God. people that you know could teach me what I'm doing wrong. And when you're in that environment too, like there's no you know bullshitting. Like they'll cut straight to the point and tell you exactly what you're doing wrong because they want their team to be better. So they're gonna obviously push you to be better. And it was just yeah, a really fun environment to be around. So that's amazing, dude. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, like I the amount of respect I have for you that like to pivot to pivot like that and then so quickly become world class at something. <laughs> I um, appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. You, uh, you you clearly know what you're doing. So the um and so what do you do now? Because yeah. now you're out of school, right? Yeah, so I'm out of school. Um, my first year out of school, I decided I wanted to coach the league team. So in my senior year of university, I actually had to go back to Japan. Um, I wasn't because of COVID and everything, there wasn't really much sense for me to stick around in Canada. I don't have a whole lot of family here, so I just went home to Japan for a little bit. And because of that, I couldn't compete. The ping's too high. So I decided, like, okay, if I can't compete, I'm going to coach the team. So the I got ping really... is too high in Japan, like even on the Japanese server? Oh, I mean, sorry, to compete in the collegiate uh, in North America. Oh, yeah, right. I, I oh, because, the... right. Yeah. Like, it wouldn't be right, fair if right. my teammates would be on right. Japan Ping laws, you know, they're all in America, so, uh, I just, but I can coach, right, I don't, that doesn't um, stop me from, my ping doesn't, you know, change a thing, it's just giving advice and stuff like that, so, I decided to coach, and I got super obsessed with it, I, like, fell in love with it right away, and decided I don't want to play anymore, I really want to focus on coaching and teaching, I get way more gratification out of it, so, I uh, started learning a lot more about, like, league strategy and re league theory which gets into almost like chess where you're learning you know concepts and sort of like this beats this um what team what makes a good team comp like how do you properly win league of legends and you have to learn about the meta and all this mm. side of league that i wasn't really familiar with because i was just focused on becoming a better player but when you become a coach you need to understand what makes a good team and you that doesn't really matter so much for solo queue usually so it was a really really sort of interesting arc for me to study that aspect of league and understand okay how do you win as a team instead of in solo queue and i got really hooked on that and then taught my team everything i learned in that short time and we grew a lot of trust and yeah over the last two years we were able to get fourth place in CELO and there's like 600 schools that participate so we're really happy wow <laughs> and so you so so then so then you graduated school and you just transitioned into just coaching now the yeah. team yeah so i started working as a digital marketing person for a coaching company so that i'd be able to 
learn more about coaching while also pursuing the league side of it. So that's kind of what I do now is uh, I'm starting up a business actually with uh, a UFC coach and together we're trying to create the first sort of esports dojo where we're implementing martial arts philosophies into an esports training program so they can replicate oh, wow. the uh, martial arts style classes, but then it's more esports oriented. Yeah. And oh my goodness. Yeah, that is you, like, I can show you what that's the best right thing now. I've ever heard. <laughs> Yeah, so the website's like I mean, clearly, out. you know, you can you can tell from my content that that resonates with me. Oh, completely. That's why I was like, I wanted to talk to you about it right away, and I, we're already running out of time. I wish we could just talk about this for an hour, but we'll have to talk about it time. <laughs> but yeah, I'll send yeah. over the PDF and the stuff, and you can have a look at it on your own time. So I don't, that would be amazing. Yeah. that would be amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so. Uh, and so now, like, you, but you still, I mean, you post clips of you playing, so you mm -hmm. still play, so you, like, work, play, and then you, like, focus on your coaching and your business. It, it feels like yeah. you got a lot going on. Yeah, yeah, so the business takes up most of my day, um, especially, I've been working at it most of this year, and um, my partner has 16 martial arts gyms, so he's a very successful business owner, <laughs> and he's no just kind of like a teaching me the ropes of how to be an entrepreneur because I'm not very familiar with that. And how did you meet him? Um, I coached him in league. <laughs> no way. Yeah, yeah I did. <laughs> and he was like, oh, I'm a USC coach. I'm like, no way. <laughs> like, you know, anyone can say that. And then it turned out he really was and we got along. So, but him. how, like, how did he, I mean, oh, I was just how did he get into YouTube. league? Oh, he, his sons are into it. Yeah. And oh really he, yeah, so he's like an old league. guy like me yeah he's uh 53 i want to say he's yeah. 53 yeah he's 53 plays league like at least you know four games a day <laughs> he's yeah really funny guy oh my god he's the best yeah so he's my hero yeah i'd love to introduce you guys i'm sure you guys would i would i'd love to meet him how, yeah. is he good how good is he he's bronze yeah he's, he's bronze okay all he right loves good. The game. He's so <laughs> if, this, if this dude mm -hmm. owned 16 ufc gyms was starting an esports dojo <laughs> had two kids was 53 and a higher league rank than me i was i was about to quit yeah but he honestly it's so fun coaching him because you know he's a martial arts coach he just eats it up he's like oh my gosh this is like this in fighting and oh it's it's the best coaching sessions he's just yeah really really good that's time. amazing yeah, his name's paul minhas so i'll uh, have to introduce you guys, you guys yeah that would be great mm -hmm. that would be great yeah. um okay <laughs> so uh, I appreciate that, Jonah. That was oh, really. Um, I'm obsessed with your story. I think it's. Uh, <laughs> I think it's. I think it's amazing. Um, but let's. Should we do? Should we do? Should we do some coaching? Yeah, yeah. So let me uh, share my screen here. I'll just pull up the game one that you sent me, and we'll just start with that one, and then we'll just go through them. Whatever we get done today, we'll get done. And um, if we want to pick it up another time, I'm happy to do that. So. Yeah. So maybe. Um, uh, so let, like, let me just describe where I'm at with the game right now. Um, I, I don't know if it's useful, but like me, um, so I play. Z so, well, so I started playing a couple of years ago mm -hmm. and I did, um, I was, I basically have only played jungle. Um, and I started playing Olaf and I one tricked Olaf to feel about like, yeah. Although mm -hmm. like I hit like gold, three or something mm -hmm. and i just felt like i just felt like mechanically i couldn't i wasn't good um you know like as adcs got better yeah you know as i was like climbing through bronze and silver like basically all i would do is just like you know axe smite and just <laughs> run their their adcs yeah, yeah. down right and then as as i got to like like gold i was like fuck these adcs like know that i'm about to do that and they like can react yeah, to it and i like walk backwards yeah yeah yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> don't, don't walk backwards and i was like fuck these guys walking backwards it's too yeah. hard for me when people are moving yeah. um so i like so i picked up zach with olaf and i like mm -hmm. two tricked for a period yeah and then and then i um and then, like, about a year ago, I, like, stopped playing Olaf because my Zach, cause Zach was better and just felt more fun and felt easier, and I just liked mm -hmm. him better. Mm -hmm. um, and even though I was still having more success with Olaf, I just kind of liked Zach better. And his, like, right. yeah, just, like, his champion identity just resonated yeah, yeah. with me more. 
Um, and so I like have for the last year I've been basically just been playing Zach. I mean, you can see there I play some other <laughs> really like I tried. Yeah. <laughs> I, I played um I played some Olaf after the the rework, mm -hmm. uh, but like you know just still kind of felt clunky. Mm -hmm. Um, and so so yeah, and so Zach. I mean, and like. I mean, I'm I, well, anyway. I, I guess that I guess that like yeah. I could give you a narrative of what I think I'm good or bad at, but I think maybe it's better to just watch watch the, yeah, the games sure and you, you can tell me what I'm good or bad at. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I think Zach's a fantastic champion to pick up, and you can certainly climb with just Zach and Olaf because Zach provides a bit of AP damage as a tank. Um, surprising, <laughs> a surprising amount of damage I find. Uh, for yeah, yeah. Not really building much damage, so Zach's always nice for that and has probably the most insane gank angles out of any other champion that you really have to think about the lane and the game differently when you're laning against Zac. Um, me and myself, I mostly play mid and top. Uh, however, I've hit masters on mid top uh, and support <laughs> and jungle. <laughs> I just haven't done it on ADC yet, so that's my next challenge. But uh, Zac was one of those champions where I felt, especially in like gold to maybe up to low diamond, you could get away with so much on the champ because people just don't yeah. respect the fact that he can gank from you know the various angles that he can. It's just doesn't yeah. exist over any other jungler. So as long as you're abusing those things and you um, are sort of playing to the right side of the map as often as you can, then Zach can honestly get you to challenger just Zach alone. I've seen players do that. So uh, I think Zach's a perfect champion and Olaf's a really good secondary because it provides AD and also um you know good yeah although i don't i don't play olaf anymore i mean my 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 plan now is to just play zach until preseason and then in preseason i'll try to pick up another jungler cool okay i like that let's do that um can you see my screen i'm sharing on Discord. yeah okay perfect so, I'm just so game one i think i can't i i think game one was like a win i mean i don't know if you want to like That's okay. start with that yeah yeah well i mean well, I'm sure we'll just speed run this one really quick and go through. Uh, this this should be fine. I, I think it's really good because we have Vagar mid, which can be a kind of annoying for Zach to deal with, and then you have a very traditional like tank top, and then you have strong side bottom. And this is the type of game I want to see Zach being picked because, ideally, although early maybe you can look for some opportunities top side, you want to put most of your pressure on the bot side because getting the Twitch and Bard behind is far more valuable than getting the Orn behind um, in a yep. game like this. And you have relatively good gank setup with Braum with like, you can chain quite a bit of CC there. So I would like to see you put most of your resources into bot, but I wouldn't mind seeing like either a, like a little fast early gank top if you're, you know, um, not too far out of the way or it's like uh, after a few full clears, then you can look top side. But ideally, this yeah, I mean, it's kind of hard and bots the main focus. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, and and that I mean that is how I would describe the uh, how I would describe this. Although here I am starting wolves. Um, so you're pathing towards the top side, which I want. I wonder why. In their jungle's Talon. Talon, I feel like in this sort of matchup, Zach is a little bit susceptible to getting invaded by Talon. I find that oh, Zach is a so little, yeah. so. You, so you know, so two two reasons. Mm -hmm. Well, no, actually, just one reason and all one reason only. Mm -hmm. Like I find with so my, my philosophy on ganking with Zag is that it's much better when my when my lane is pushed in, and so like I basically try to path to where I think my lane's going to be pushed in at level you know at three twenty or whatever it is, yeah, yeah. and so. And so for me, like Caitlyn Brahm, I just like, especially with Caitlyn's, mm -hmm. I just, it's just never there for me. They're always pushed yeah. against tower. And that's so, and so that's why. Mm -hmm. um, this is a little bit hard to coordinate in platinum, I would find, but something that you can communicate with your team and in a lane like this, where it's Caitlyn Brahm versus uh, Twitch Bard, Twitch Bard can't really contest the wave exactly. Like you said, Brahm and Caitlyn should be able to. Like, you know, do whatever they want with the wave, whether they want to push, whether they want to, like, let it come in. That's really up to them in that matchup. So right. what they can do, if you're able to coordinate this with your team, is they can stack three waves. And on the cannon wave, they're going to have an entire level up on the Twitch bard, and there's going to be a massive wave crashing bot. And on opportunities like that, you can actually look to gank and dive. 
Um, right, right, the right. Is stacked up big enough. So that's something that you need to communicate with your team ahead of time. They're like, hey, are you guys able to like crash a big wave bottom and I can look for that? If not, I'm, you know, going to path topside and I'll be back like later on kind of thing. Um, right, right. So, so, when, so when, I, when, I, yeah. when, when I think like they, they are going to be pushed in, what you're saying is they don't necessarily have to be what being pushed in kind of means is that they have control over the wave and if i communicate to them to like set up something then that could work yeah exactly yeah so although i completely right. agree with you that as they're pushing in it's extremely difficult to gank as uh, zach uh, obviously <laughs> you know there's not much you can do but if you they stack up a big enough wave then there's always an opportunity to dive as Zach, especially with your passive he's one of like the craziest dive champions in the game so yeah. um, maybe yeah. look for stuff like that. Um, and in moments like this, I really want you to get into the habit. See how you're, um, you do it here. This is really nice. As you're walking between lane, you're looking at mid because there's nothing to look at on your champion right now. This is beautiful. Yeah. Since you, you know that there's nothing that you can do bot side, so you can look mid here. But here, I want you to quickly also look top as well. Because what you're going to find, you, can, you don't really know the state of the wave right now. So there could be an opportunity top um, kind of similar where Set's pushing in the wave right now, and you can look for an opportunity top in maybe like a minute-ish, but we don't really know that until we look. So when you have free time like this and you're just going to hit Raptors, and you're, you know, once you do your spells, you do that, obviously you need to look now, boom. Okay, we're done looking, there's nothing to really look at anymore. You're just, you can like stand still and auto attack. So here I want you to like quickly pen top and see what's happening there. Because that should be our next play, our next focus. Because Vagar right. is about to ping three, and it's going to be pretty hard to gank Vagar in a bit. Um, so really, the only opportunity is uh, a top gank here. So here's here's the thing. Um, like I, so in my mind, I'm thinking like I'm not going to do anything until I at least get red. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't like ganking before I'm level four. Yeah. Like it just it, it feels bad. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and I don't, I don't know, Jonah, if I were to look top, I wouldn't know what I was looking for. Like I'm not, oh, okay. Okay. So maybe that's like, what we should talk about then. Yeah. Like a minute, a minute and it, like, I know what I'm looking for if I'm like, should I go there now or not? Like, yes. Right, like right. after, after red's done, like, yes, I'll look top and I'll be like, should I do it or should I do Krugs? Right. But I don't know, like in a minute, will this be good for me? I just haven't played enough laning. I don't know wave states well enough gotcha. that I'm like, yes, this will be good in a minute. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so typically, um, just to really quickly explain how the minions work in the game, uh, it's easier if I have a lane to show you instead. <laughs> like, <laughs> so just really, really quickly. So this is like, um, we have the middle of the lane. It's kind of hard to see here. Um, okay, do you, do you know if this is gonna, which way this is going to push? This lane right now. So this is so the the red minions. Uh, I'll just so this here. is all right. So so here the red minions are gonna come and meet, and so it's gonna be there. Mm -hmm. And this is gonna push back to the blue side. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. So this is gonna push towards the Vega. Completely right. Yeah. So yeah. you understand that principle, where if the minions meet on this side of the map, then it's going to push this way, because the next minion that comes, or the next wave of minions that come, arrives It's going to come quicker. Exactly, yeah. yeah, so it's going to push sooner. And on top of that, you also have the turret doing some damage usually, so that oftentimes helps as well with the push. Um, so the same thing applies for all lanes, obviously. And the only thing that you want to be looking for in a situation like this top side is which direction is set pushing right now. Is it going this way, or is it going towards set? Because if it's going towards set and it's going to be here, right? It could be here in like a minute and a half, if that's the case. Or it could be building up a lot and it could be crashing the wave in about a minute and a half. But I highly doubt so, that right now it's going to crash anytime soon. So you should be at least thinking about which direction the wave's going to go. Because that might dictate what your next option is going to be. after you're And doing which it. direction the wave's going to go. Are you saying that it's like mostly a function of where the wave is now? On which side of the map it is? Yeah, typically. So see, uh, I can see on the minimap right now that set has a ton of blue minions. We can kind of like right. take a glimpse of that. Um, right. So I'm assuming that it's building up big time and it's going to crash into Orange Tower pretty soon. Right, right, um, right. However, right now, see how set is half HP, right? on this little yeah. the bar. He's half HP. This tells me that if Set's half HP and he's standing up this far, 
Orn is probably also probably half HP, you know? Right. If he was full right. HP, he would probably kill Set right now. <laughs> like, Set should not be really standing here if he's half HP. He's comfortable for a reason, and I... My instinct wants to quickly pan there and understand why. Because if Orn's right. low HP right now, maybe there's an opportunity to skip this completely, walk top, kill Orn, and Orn misses all this, all these minions. And then right, 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 the game, you would, right. The, the set would just automatically win lane. You would never need to go top again, right? And then you can put all your focus into bottom and just kind of leave him on an island. But it, we don't really know or have the option unless if we look. So that's the only thing that I'm really trying to communicate right now is if you look, then you can at least weigh your options. You don't necessarily yeah. to move or anything, but it gives you more time to think about plays rather than having to think in the moment. And I think that'll make a really big difference because the more time you have to think about a play, the higher probability of a good conclusion, you know, uh, is going to come out. So uh, we should be. Yeah. This. So. In so, OK. Like too. Yeah. Like we should be looking top really quickly. Just see what's happening and then take scuttle. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, for, no, yeah, my thinking there I was. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. No, you see, and and this and this is exactly it, right? Like this is, like, you know, one of the things about looking at places, and it's the same as the mid play that I just made, right? Like there, I was looking at mid because I could e over the wall. Like yeah. I would do yeah. that. That is a play that I would make. Yeah. And so my problem mm -hmm. is that like I look when there is relevant information for me, <laughs> and like here, yeah. like I wasn't, I was never thinking of because set was pushed. Like, if Set would have been up against Tower, I think I probably would have looked. Because I would, like, right, yeah. oh, I could skip red and go to Tower. Mm -hmm. But, like, yeah. yeah. So I need to get better at, like, looking at Wave State and being, like, in a little bit, will there be a play for me? And thinking about that, like, I'm not, you yeah, know, that's yeah. not how I... Like, I can I can use the mini-map. Like, I, I was looking at the mini-map being like, well, they're both pushed, I'll just scuttle here, because <laughs> right, they both yeah, have prior. Yeah. That's, that's kind of what it seemed like. It was a bit of, like, a flow. Like, okay, I'll do, like, my... Uh, this you know thing next and then like once i'm here it's like okay it, it's like almost like at this point okay now what <laughs> you know what yeah I mean? where it should have been yeah. like okay yeah. like maybe there's a play top side as you're like hitting the red or at least walking towards it and the reason why is we're gonna see here in a second when you do come um we, i was kind of right where orn had to be low hp for set to be low hp standing up here so maybe as the wave was crashing, maybe he might have been low enough with no abilities where there was an opportunity to dive him, right? But we wouldn't have known. Yeah, that. although level level three dive over that wall is just not long enough. Oh, oh for here? Yeah, I mean you can you can, you can get there. I mean I think I do get there here. I think I think I do gank this. Um, but yeah, you're you're right. You're right. Mm -hmm. uh, so here we have the wave pushing back towards set. So. This one, the only way for this gank to work is if Orn uses his W first. So this is always something that you should be mindful of as well. Is uh, the his W is the thing that makes him dash? Uh, no, it's the thing that he kind of like breathes fire. <laughs> right, <laughs> when right. He does that, he can't be CC'd during that animation. Um, he can't be CC'd during that. Yeah, so he can't be stunned or knocked up or anything. So oh. during that, and also, I guess you also have to think about the dash too, but I was thinking more of the W, because a good Orn player will hold W for either the set stun see, or see. the Zack stun. So uh. that's something that we need to consider as we're going in here. If he uses it, I 100% think we can go for it. Um, however, this is like a very low percentage chance if the Orn is good and is holding W. But I do like the fact that you have Sweeper right now and you're holding this. Oh, okay, so see how he used it here, and see how it says, like, unstoppable? Yeah. So, he, he's, it actually worked out perfectly, <laughs> because you're going to end up... <laughs> yeah, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't know that. I didn't even know that it did that. Okay, but now you know, okay? And now I know. Yeah, yeah, But it actually worked out beautifully, because he used W as you're jumping in, but I just want you to be mindful of that um, in these sort of situation, because if he didn't use W there, then the gank would have been... A little bit right, right. And then he could have just used it as he saw my E animation. Right, right. yeah, exactly. Um, let's see here. So, let's go back to here. I just want to think. So here, my mindset was, I, I want to back on Dark Seal, and I want to go bot to drag. Okay. So that's why I do, that's why I do Krugs. Yeah, I'm just wondering. Because there's... 
the way I see bot state right now is it's relatively volatile because Twitch is moving up and we aren't too sure where Talon is at the moment, I believe. He's uh, most likely on the bot side, I, I believe. We, we, saw, we saw Talon bot. I think so. Right? We saw, I, I thought we saw, we, we saw a, my, a quick glimpse. Yeah, I, I pinged him. I pinged him right before I did my gank, so he yeah, is bot. Yeah. Okay, he is bot side. Okay, perfect. I mean, he's bot. He's probably recalling right now. Yeah. Um, and then and then probably coming top. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we have this that just respawned, and your second rotation of camps are always going to be more valuable than the first rotation. It's just like yeah. the more times you kill them, the more it's going to give. And I'm wondering right now if our tempo is actually better to recall and start heading straight to bot side and then clear upwards again. Instead of... Because I'm wondering... Let's actually see what happens when we play it out. Because this is a bit of a tricky call at the moment because you can do what you're doing right now by taking this camp and then recall but then we're going to be a little bit late to our bot side here and i'm wondering if it's too late or not because right now there's the other world where we're on grump right now instead of here and i'm wondering if that's a better scenario because we can just end up clearing this later anyways since we go grump and then do this and then do this and then we're back up kind of thing um yeah i mean so why wouldn't i want to clear towards bot here like towards bottom like oh do you like yeah a, uh, wolves grump and then into a bot gank is that what you're uh doing? yeah i mean so in in my mind what i'm thinking mm -hmm. is oh here i go help um what it, it, yeah in, in my mind what i'm thinking there is i, I want i want to get uh, I want to I want to get drag, mm -hmm. like I want to use. Okay, uh, there's a really, it's very unlikely that you guys can get dragon until your bot lane resets, especially at the state that they're in right now. If you look at their HP and mana, right. So right. the probability of you being able to just clear and then go bottom and then they help you with dragon is really low, especially against Talon. Like, there's a, a good chance that Talon can stop you on the dragon if, as long as they you know are able to move. So, 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 what would you be thinking here? I mean, so what? Why, why go? Why recall? Like, why click? Well, yeah, and then why path top? Like, why do that just to continue clearing? Yes. So right now there shouldn't be a play bot side. If there is, so here, let me show you. So we get this kill, beauty, boom. Here, I would instantly recall, because you know that there's going to be something happening bot side, with the way that it is right now. If you see this, and you have this camp coming up, and then this one's coming up next. So by the time you recall and you walk here, this grump will be up. And as the grump is up, we can actually look for a play bottom before we go for this clear. If it's not there, then we do the clear, boom, 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 reset back into bot, and then dragon. Right. Yeah. Because as if you watch here, when you go up here, we'll look at the time. So four minutes is where you could have recalled. But instead, we're going to waste uh 15 seconds walking to this okay and once we are here it takes us another forty seconds to recall here and during this time what we could have done is we could have killed Gromp and be done wolves or at least be on the wolves right now and be walking up into this as this one is spawning Instead of the 40, we just used like 45 seconds to just walk to this camp and kill it. When we could have recalled, walked here, and done these in time. Right. And then this one, you can collect as you've killed this one, and then you move into this one. Does that make sense? Yeah. Instead, yeah. Of, yeah. instead yeah. of using the tempo and the time to walk there, take it, recall, and then you're going to have to walk back. It's a lot more efficient if you recall, skip this, and then cycle back into it again. Yeah, yeah. Because you're catching yeah, them as yeah. they're spawning. And it's going to give you a lot more than this camp just gave you because it's the second rotation of them. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Mm -hmm. I love it. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And then, uh, uh, as I mentioned too, like maybe there's an opportunity bottom, right? If you recall right away. Let's, let's say you recalled, you ran straight bottom, look for a gank, and then you can start the camps, right? Right. There's also right. that option. But we, I mean, that's hard to say. That would have to be in the moment. Um, so here right. instead we're wasting a lot of time just like, I mean, maybe we kill, which is nice, but if we did the other alternative, let's see how much time has gone by, by the time we recall here. 
So by the time we recall, it's 5.35. When was the initial? We could, like, be, we could be there again. <laughs> we could be there again, basically. <laughs> we could basically be there again. So hold on. So 5.30. Yeah, it's been almost like a minute and a half where we've taken one camp. Right, right, right. Yeah, it's yeah. Been a, over a minute and a half, actually. Where we've all we've yeah. done, essentially all we've done is take this camp. When we could have taken this camp, this camp, this camp, and then probably had a gank top or like done full clear in time. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, I love it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, and I, and I think that that's it. Well, so, you know, the other thing here, Jonah, is that like 1200 is a weird back for me. I hate backing on 1200 mm -hmm. because like I, I get by armies for a thousand and then nothing yeah, you want dark seal or something like that yeah yeah i want dark seal or boots right so 1300 right. or 1350 is so much better than 12 so i'm always biased to like oh, i'll just do that one more camp yeah, like yeah. how much how much does that play into um, this decision i think in this decision the tempo that you gain from recalling is far more significant than the gold that you'd be getting from the off camp because if you even if you think about it you're waiting for this gold and then you take it but then what is the value you get out of it if you're just missing time on all of these you know um mm -hmm. so in that sense i would still look to recall and in a situation like this even though like this is a very uh not nitpicky thing honestly this is something that you can really consider is set as a champion doesn't want these minions to crash into turret right now do you see this yeah like ideally he wants this to be a freeze right here. So right, if right. you were super, super on his team, and he would be so happy if you did this, is if you actually killed these two for him and just stood here and tanked it until these, these blue minions arrive. Because what that's going to do is it's going to start his laning phase with the wave here. Why, why kill those two? Uh, it's just a little bit too big right now for him. There, there's too many minions, so these minions are going to just completely obliterate the next wave. So you want to kill right. him around four or five? alive around here and if you can do that then the wave is perfectly frozen where he doesn't need to touch a thing and all this is going to do is these red minions are going to kill those blue minions like all day <laughs> and right and then the enemy top laner who's orn is going to have to walk all the way back and miss a wave because the yeah. minions are yeah. killing his minions yeah so if you're yeah. able to yeah. Yeah. hold this for him it's actually really really nice for the top lane right now um, it would start his lane in a perfect spot, but as it crashes, you're going to see he's going to like be a little bit sad because this is now slow pushing back to Ornn. Um, so right. he has to play with the lane stay as it's like slow pushing in, and then Set can't really do much as it's like crashing in because he's melee, and there's a lot better chance if he can start the lane from here in a perfect freeze and then have the opportunity to run Ornn down through the lane rather than the minions going towards Ornn and Ornn yeah. has safety. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I just completely missed that. Yeah. Uh, here, I really like you going to Raptors, though. Um, this adaption is really good because here you definitely. Well, but this be this isn't an adaption, right? This is my plan, right? That, like, <laughs> okay, and <yeah. laughs> my my plan right, got right. All, my plan got all fucked up because of okay, like the having a, top side, stuff. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but my plan was always all right, and then I'm gonna clear down to bottom look drag. Right, right. Yeah, no, I think that's good. Um, it's just we, uh, at least now, we know the other alternative of, okay, we don't do drag on the first rotation, but we do one more rotation, let our bot, bot lane reset, and then we look for it. Um, if we yeah, have the alternative. Yeah, yeah. Especially if we're pathing towards topside. Obviously, it'd be nice if we're pathing towards bot side for the bot pressure. It's typically easier that way. But you can always look for full clear, like reset into a bot pressure uh, instead. There's always that alternative. Yeah. Here, like this, that you're covering. This is nice. It's really good. Um, if your bot lane's good here, they don't shove it in all the way, and then they look for reset. Nice, they are doing that. That's really good. Uh, they look for a reset, or they help me with drag. Mm, that's a tough call. If I was Caitlyn, I would prefer if you just did your camps over the dragon right now. However, if you feel comfortable that you and Brom can take it. Like, I wouldn't want to pull Caitlyn over here. That's the only thing right now. Because Caitlyn... Why? Because she's low health. She's low health, and she's missing farm bottom right now for this. Um, and what you're going to find is you're taking their time right now. Very similar to what happened topside where we could have recalled. It's a tempo thing where they are using their time right now to help you with Dragon. 
Therefore, mm -hmm. their bot lane is going to come back with full resources faster to lane, and they're going to have to recall and come back and be late to lane. Does that make sense? Right. And by yeah. the time they're late to lane, this Twitch is going to crash the wave, they're going to miss minions, and it's going to slow push back this way, and then you're going to run into the same issue again where they're like on this side of the map and you can't make a play. <laughs> but isn't, so, isn't, drag, isn't drag worth all that? It's hard to say. Um, I would almost argue it's not in this circumstance, just because I believe you guys are strong enough where you can take the dragon later on and without a worry of them taking it first. Right. So as long right. as they're not getting it and you're getting right. it at a later date, you want right. to be giving your team as many resources as you can. And right. I right. So so okay, that that makes sense. So like the opportunity cost of of them just pushing in the wave and me clearing mm -hmm. isn't actually drag because yes. Yes. Because then bot lane comes back to lane mm -hmm. and they have to like they have to then yeah. Like, they're in the same position. They can't just rush to drag or else they miss, like, two waves. Exactly, exactly. So here you see, like, uh, it's hard right. to see because we're not panned bottom right now. But you can see a <laughs> massive wave crashing into bottom at the moment. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell because the icons are on the minimap. But we're going to see in a second there's a ton of... Oh, yeah. I'll pause. Oh, shoot. I missed it. <laughs> but you're going to see on the minimap there's a ton of minions here. See that? Right, right, so right. There right, has to be, like, right. two and a half waves or something crazy like an insane amount of minions and XP that they're going to miss because they helped with dragon. Right. So it's like, okay, we got dragon, <laughs> but at what cost? <laughs> right. On top right. Of that, like on top of you, the dragon, we also have to think about your tempo, your tempo. You would be done this camp, this camp, this camp, and you would be almost into your top side, finishing this, looking for a recall straight back into bottom by now. Right. Because you also have to think, Dragon is a lot faster when your bot lane has items to help you with, too. Right, that's they were, true. They were leashing it with no items, therefore it's going to also take longer to do Dragon. So I bet that's a mistake I make a lot. I bet this situation comes up a lot for me. Mm. Sometimes I sit there for fucking four, like, a minute doing <laughs> Dragon by myself. Yeah, so always right? keep like, that concept in mind. If you can take it at a later date and you're confident your team's in a position of power to take it at a later date, just take as much resources as you can right now and be like, okay, we can just take it later. Like, that's not a big deal, you know? Like, there's no rush to take it right now if we have a lot more other stuff to take. If there's nothing to take right now, then for sure take Dragon. But if there's other stuff on the map to get back to, like, let's optimize on that first. Yeah. Um, here, I think you can just start clearing into your top side again. Because with the way it is right now, it's just a little bit forced. You know this wave is pushing yeah. into them, and yeah. they're playing really far back. So we have this camp, this camp, this camp, this camp to go to. The, the mindset should be, I want to clear this as fast as possible so that I can come back bottom again. Instead right. of, I need right. to come back bottom again right away. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, my, yeah, my thinking here was that we were, like, strong enough to, like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, dive and, sh to work out. and shit. Yeah. It seems to work out. I'm just wondering why it does. Let's watch. Because here in my mind, I feel like Bard and Twitch should be safe enough to avoid this. I think... Oh, Kobe. what a W! Kobe. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> what a Hail Mary! Wait, you just predicted that. That was perfect. Okay. I mean, it certainly works. It's just uh, not an extremely high probability play, I would say. Yeah, I just felt like we're so strong mm -hmm, mm -hmm. here. Um, like, bot had just backed. Mm -hmm. I had just gotten six. Yeah, yeah. And I just, wa I just wanted to fight. Okay. I mean, I but 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 but, but, I, but I agree. I agree. It's it's forced. I mean, it is a little forced, but. If you took into account that this wave was getting really big and you can play off of it, then I like it a lot. Um, if the wave wasn't as big as it is, then the ball lane can stay under tower relatively safe, in my opinion. Where they didn't need to be standing back here, but they could be just standing under tower and be a lot safer that way and look for an outplay. Um, where if you have this big stacked wave here, uh, this you don't need to help with. You, you can go away by now here. Because I don't think Twitch can even contest this 1v2. So, uh -huh. you pushing this right now, like, we have to think about these camps. These camps could be going away to Talon right now, so we need to be defending these as fast yeah, as we can. Yeah, uh, and they did go into Talon, if I remember. The, okay, yeah. I mean, And here, yeah. you're also I... just taking the plate gold away from your bot lane, too. Uh, and the <clears> SP, <throat> so 
Here, I would want you to recall as fast as you can. I'm actually... And I yeah, I like the play in the end. The play was really good. Ball side. I don't want to take plate gold and XP away. Uh, no, you want I to mean, give that as much as you can to the laners, actually. Typically. I, I know, <laughs> but... Uh, you, it's uh, it's, like, it's uh, so low uh, cute, and who the <laughs> fuck knows who these people are. Yeah, yeah. So... Like here, Especially like I'm, scenario, I'm, because you have camps up, it's like it's as if a laner was taking your jungle camps because when they could be taking their own farm, it's like similar to that in a laner's perspective because you have farm up, so you could be taking that, but instead you're taking this. So yeah. So in my mind here, like what I'm thinking is that like I can carry this game, mm -hmm. and like I'm I'm trying I to get myself big here. Because I'm already big, so yep. I'm like I can I can like I just need to get myself big here and I can win the game. Right. Um, but if that's the so, case, I I love that idea. But if that's the case, then wouldn't you want these three camps over three minions right now? Well, I, yeah, you're saying just back is like you're you're saying here just back. Yeah, because three camps like these three camps, if you kill all of them, will get you far more fed than these three little minions in the plate that you're about to take. Yeah. If if your idea and your philosophy is like genuinely I need to get as strong as possible to carry the game, which I agree, you can 100% carry this game, then your thought process should be, okay, bye guys, I'm going to go farm my camps now because there's stuff up. Instead of yeah, okay. I'm going to take this away from bot lane. Because now you're sharing, right, 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 so you're right. actually not getting that much out of this. You're not getting much gold. Where you could be getting a ton of gold topside, and you could be having a fast track right into a bot gank again. You could right, be another right. like 20 seconds ahead on this next gank bottom. Instead yeah, of so, walking around right now. Yeah. I mean, it seems like a recurring theme, doesn't it? That like tempo is not like I'm not I'm I'm making <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm making decisions that sacrifice tempo. Yeah. And there's a world here where if you had recalled, let's see. If you had recalled right away, we would be into the top side in time to potentially protect this set from the gank. You could have been here for the counter gank potentially if you'd recalled fast enough. Because we're going to see when Talon ganks, it's here. Talon shows up here. If you had recalled sooner, you, there's a very high probability that you would have already been up here for this. Right. There was a play here right. made. Yeah. Right. Right. Yep. So here. But now the camps are gone, so see how sad it is right now? Because the very camps sad. are gone. So instead of getting these three camps and getting yourself very, very fed, you shared plate gold and like three minions spot side. Well, and Talon got to eat. I mean, yeah. some of the camps would have been gone anyway. Potentially, but uh, let's see. I, I don't think he would. I mean, I only like it was. It was only about twelve seconds or something, right? Um, let's see. So we make the bot play. Okay, he's dead. So this is around 8.55. So you're saying just recall, yeah. recall here. Yeah, so 8.55 is where you could have recalled. And then he finishes the top camps around now 8.37. So you, there's a good chance that you would have maybe met him here. Met him there, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, the, the, I mean, the print, the print, the print, the principle stands. Yeah, the principle is very similar. Yeah, where you want to go back up into the top side because there's more opportunities there. Okay, so we're here. There's no top camps. Harold, do you go for the steal here? Oh, Bard this is a really good roam here, actually. No, I don't. Really nice. Yeah, Bard plays this really well where he comes off the reset and goes straight to Harold. If Bard wasn't here, then there's probably an opportunity. But okay. So back yeah, I mean, also just don't love fighting with my ult down and... Yeah, no, that, that was a good one to get out of. Um, we could probably even look at leaving sooner if we identify that Bard's there. Maybe we cut our losses a little bit sooner and dip. Right, yeah, I kind of just hung, hung around a little bit. Mm -hmm. um... Yeah, because maybe if we didn't hang around, we could have been bought for this one. Why not? Because if if we identify that Bard was here, then we have to realize that Twitch is solo, alone, bottom. So maybe our thought process should be, okay, instead of going in on Bard here, I should be sprinting bottom because I know Bard's not going to be there on time. <laughs> and we can just right. go the Twitch and dive him instead. Yeah. Right. Um, 
So let's skip to this. It's the bot there. Boom. <laughs> that was as max range as it gets. Isn't this the worst feeling of Zach? When you get a cube and there's nothing to click on? It's the worst. <laughs> yeah, it's the worst feeling. But uh, he I, I still slows him down Zach. a bit. Yeah, I used to play a bit of Zach and I was always like, oh man, if only there's something. Oh, he has ult now, that makes it annoying. Okay. You're pretty close to your item. You're actually super strong. Um... That was really patient. Good job. I like this. Yeah, I, I, I was I was waiting for her to net him. Mm -hmm. uh, but I guess I missed that he that she did. No, this was really, really good. A lot of junglers would panic and just W, like, instantly. No, I'm, I'm totally fine for my ADC to die. <laughs> we killed our jungler right before. Drag. I like how that's the thought process. <laughs> <laughs> Sacrifices have to be made. Sorry, Kate. <laughs> okay, let's see what happened here. Did she just die, go back mid? There's not much she can do about that. I like. I think it's fine. You going for dragon here? I mean, based on hearing you talk, I might be overvaluing dragons. They're just hard to take now. They just got so much tankier than they used to be. So it just takes. Yeah, I mean, it takes a, time a minute and a half for me yeah. to kill this dragon by myself. Yeah. So they are massive rewards, but it, you just always have to think about how long it's going to take and what you're going to miss out because of it. Um, I think it's fine to go for Drag here because Talon's down. Uh, maybe we should ping Fizz to come. Uh, here's like one of those opportunities again where it's just. Do I not? Ahead. I think I do. I not ping Fizz. Yeah, there I am. Okay, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, yeah, in these kind of situations, we just like as as nothing is happening around us, just begin to develop the habit of looking around the map and see what is happening mid. I wouldn't go. I would just let her die as well. But at least it's good to see, like, maybe they used Bard ult, maybe they used, you know, Vagar ult, but we don't really know, because we didn't really see. Right. So this changes how we play this dragon, because if Bard has ult right now, this really could get dicey, where if he doesn't, then you guys can take this completely safe, and there's no threat whatsoever. But I still feel like it's safe, us three against I them three. So too. Yeah, Talon just comes off the map really fast. That's the only thing, but I think you guys are perfectly fine here. It's just the building the habit of looking around while there's nothing to look at on your own screen is a really, really good, especially as Zach, because he can get places so quickly and there's so many opportunities to gank that within like an instant, you could always find a play or look for a play in a few minutes. Good. Cool. Yeah, I'm bad at that. I mean, I, that's one of the things that I'm working on. Here's the, again, I think we should just recall and get back on the map because right now, your team would like you to be as strong as possible to help sort of the state of the game. Like, Caitlyn just came back off reset. Fizz is happy to stick around a little longer. Ideally, they would like you on the map to pressure. And right now, you're in a state where you can't really help them if anything occurs because you have to clear these camps. So, ideally, I think I would want you to recall, get your item, you have the gold anyways, and then start clearing these camps because these camps aren't going to really give you much more to buy. Like, that significant of an upgrade compared to what you already have, if you had recalled, since you have the Mythic already. Right. So here it would be kind of nice like if we're clearing these camps with our items rather than without it, because now you're going to probably have to recall, and there's not really much play to be made. Yeah. I guess we got 1k out of it, so it's not too bad. It's just in a different world, maybe something occurs there, and then we can't go to it because we have no items. And we're just clearing, stuck on a lot of gold and clearing camps. Right. I, I mean, it worked I worked out pretty well, though. Well, I do. I do think about like, is something about to happen in the next minute? And I it just, mm -hmm. I think for me, there felt like no was the oh, answer. Like, yeah. yeah, that's fair.
Another one where he uses another the one. Oh, oh no, here I, here nice, I missed. Nice. Could escape. Whew. Did he die? Nice. Jonah, I've got five minutes. Okay. <laughs> okay, so at this state of the game, just because we have five minutes, I want to explain this concept to you. I think it's really important. As Zach especially, you have such a strong gank that ideally in most situations, mid tower is the most powerful objective in the game to get first out of over every other objective. But I'm wondering if you know why. Just going to leave it up open to the floor for you. Um... Why you think mid turret might be... The best of is it, to get first. Um, is it because you then have access to more of the map? Yeah, for sure. Um, that's a huge part of it. Do you, so I'll explain why. Um, wh let's look at these mid towers, right? If the main objective of Zach is to look for good gank angles and to secure objectives, basically, there's like you know, and you like set your team up for success by doing that. The best way to get dragons and heralds and these objectives is by killing mid tower, pushing the wave out to this tower, and then peeling back through the enemy jungle into these objectives. Does that make sense? And why? Why is that? Because when you're able to do that, so Zach especially, th your team can successfully. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm going the wrong way. You're on blue. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> your team can successfully push up to this tower. If you can get it, because you're Zach, you can cover him on multiple angles on the side. So they're very, very safe to just ARAM mid and push this up. And once the wave is here at this tower, their team has to respond to the wave, obviously. Otherwise, you guys take the tower. So they're stuck on the back foot positioning here. And what you can do as Zach is once you push up to here, you can move into the jungle, start putting vision in their jungle, taking the camps, and then move back into these objectives. Because once you do that, then they have to blindly, on all of your vision, walk through their jungle in order to reach Dragon. And as Zack, you can just jump on them. Right. So it's really, really easy to play the game that way. As a, right. If you're able right. to kill the mid turret... I mean, up, this is... A, back, yeah. That's a core concept that has never, like, really made that much sense to me. Where, like... Like, I have heard... That you know you want like mid prio before going for objectives, but I I never really have understood why. Okay, uh, I I have a perfect example actually that I I coached a student yesterday and he had, he ran into like the perfect scenario where he uh, uh let's see he ran into this exact situation. This is a masters mid Swain player that I was coaching, and. Where is it? I was dragging. I saw, I saw a TikTok on this, didn't I? Oh, yeah, yeah. I posted a little clip from it, actually. This is a different uh, scenario, though, from the coaching session. Where here, see how they skip going mid first? So, uh, yeah. So they're kind of like setting up the the play by like just walking in blind like through here, you know? Um, they, mm -hmm. they aren't really looking to secure the mid prowl first and the reason why mid prowl is so important in this scenario is imagine if they pushed mid and then walked back through this wave right then they would have vision of here and here and then they have to walk in through this vision but instead they're skipping that step and then this is all blind they can't like see any of this area this is really not their space anymore so there could be enemies all in this area and then they can just walk in and claim this area for free so then now you're kind of on the back foot and you have to concede this space since they get to walk in for free through this way. So you're going to end up missing minions, and then they can push out this way and go back this way. And you're kind of just stuck with, you know, two terrible options. You're just stuck in the middle between both, because you didn't secure the mid prow, And then they end up getting here first, and then it's just like a disaster. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. Right, right, so imagine right. Imagine where if they secured mid prow first, like let's say they shoved the mid wave out first, then this team wouldn't be able to even walk in this space right now. So right. they would have to go respond to the mid wave first, and then they have to walk in through vision. So that's why mid prow is really important, and especially on a champion like Zac, because when we look at situations where 
Uh, let's go to like the next dragon. Um, just really quick. When when is the next dragon? Uh, okay, so in a situation like this, if you guys have vision of this space in the topside jungle, like this area up here, it makes it far easier as Zach to just turn, decide to turn or do dragon. Yeah. Because the best way to do that is you shove the wave all the way up here, and then you guys peel back as a team, and then as a team, you right. can control the right. game, because they right. have to respond to the mid wave. So when you right. skip that, right. now it's right. like this area is dark, and then they can walk up all the way to here for free, basically and walk into this area for free as well, if you don't control the mid-wave. Um, right. And, that, and that's why mid-prio is so important. Yeah. Right, that makes so much sense. Because yeah. right here here now, it's like we're... we're I mean, this... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah this would be so much better if we could see what they were doing. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So now you guys are... See, and you're already getting scared. You guys are, like, pathing back this way. And then they can enter through this way. They can already enter this space, where they shouldn't be allowed to at all. This yeah. should be this wave should be at the tower right now. They should yeah. be either having to choose to last hit these minions or walk in through all of your vision and then come at this blind. <laughs> right. And it makes right, such right, such right, a right, it's right, like right, right, right. They can't they can't make this play if you guys do that. Yeah. Um so Right. That, that is, is I mean yeah. that is so true. Yeah. So see how hard this is now? You guys are like, oh shit, they're, they're everywhere. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> what the fuck did Talon come from? <laughs> yeah, where does he come from? Yeah, 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 yeah. They shouldn't even be allowed to walk up like this. It should be... You guys are in such a position of power where you always secure the wave first, then peel back, and um, the objectives will always be free that way. It's either free or they suicide for it. It's one of two options. So it's like, you know, pick, pick which one you want. It's, uh, it's a win-win. It's kind of like a like a chess checkmate, you know. Here, yeah. You're kind of giving them an option where you don't need to be. Yeah. Okay. That's. Uh, I think that's a good place to end. For, uh, <laughs> All right, uh, brother. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, that is. I mean, that's so good. So yeah, I need to. I need to work on making better tempo decisions and um, thinking about opportunity cost of some of the objective takes that i make yep just um, think about how long it's going to take and is there camps up to take or is there bot lane to farm or do they need to get back to lane asap just like think about that first before taking the dragon and you'll always come to a better conclusion yeah yeah, yeah. another big thing for me that is like so stupid i'm almost embarrassed to say it's like i me not like sometimes I the opportunity cost for me is like, do I take this dragon or do I not or do they take this dragon? And really the decision is do I take this dragon now or can we take it better in a minute or two? Mm -hmm. Um so that and then I need to look at plays I need to look at my like lane laners and lane states and just plays happening on the map more often. Yeah, that's just, takeaway. Yeah. That's that's a big like habit thing to build. So um just as you're playing games, just it at first, it's going to take a lot of mental brain power to consciously be mindful of the fact that, like, okay, I should be looking mid, I should be looking top right now, as nothing's going on. But I'm telling you, after a few weeks of doing it, it's just going to become autopilot. You're just going to, like, quickly pan over, boom, back to yourself. Pan over, back right. to yourself. Um, um, and then, and then um, mid prior before, mid prior and vision before objectives. I yep. think that, yep. too, is. That's a big one. Yeah, if you skip that uh, step, your game is becoming right. much harder. <laughs> Much, much harder. Yeah. All right. This, I mean, this has been amazing. Mm. This has been I'm amazing. So Thank you, Jonah. It was, a, it was an honor. I really love your content. Keep keep at it. You're going to be one of the biggest league content creators. I really believe that. <laughs> I don't have time to be a small league content creator, so I don't know how I'm going to have time to be a big one. <laughs> no, you're doing great. Please keep it up. People are really resonating with your content. It's going to help a lot of people out. And I'd love to call about the uh, business that I'm creating. I'm sure there's lots of stuff that we could work on together for it. So that that, that would be awesome. I mean, I like I'm hoping we can do this again, Jonah. Um, oh, just both. When are you going to visit? Just let me know. Anytime. Yeah, I mean, well, now I'm gonna now I'm driving to DC for the foreseeable future to help um, with with my brother, and then. Um, uh, but yeah, maybe in like a couple weeks or something, we can we can do it. I'll Lovely. I'll I'll, I'll write you. I mean, I'll write you on Discord now. It's easier than TikTok. Yeah, yeah, anytime. If you ever any have if you ever have questions too, just 
message me. I'm always available. <laughs> so, All right, brother. Thank you. No, thank you. I really appreciate it. And best of luck with all the wild stuff going on with you right now. That sounds like Thank you, man. <laughs> appreciate <laughs> it. Talk soon. Yeah, have a great day. Catch you later. Bye. Bye.